Thank you for joining me. My name is Pastor Rick, and I am the senior pastor of At The Well. We are an international, and we are a prophetic ministry. Uh, for the next 30 minutes, we're going to bring to you a Holy Spirit-led uh, word, uh, and we're going to encourage you today. This is going to be all about encouragement. Uh, the Word of God is an encouraging word. It takes us from a place of where we're at, and hopefully and elevates us to a brand new place. And so it's important that we understand that the gospel uh, will correct some things in our life that need correcting, reveal things in our life that have become hidden, and then also empower us and encourage us to go to that next level, to seek more, more understanding, more, more of the wisdom of the kingdom of God, those things that will help us grow in this relationship while we have the opportunity in this very short thing called life. Uh, so today, I want to encourage you with a special word called a diligent life. It's a, a, a diligent life uh, to live like Christ and to live it consistent, uh, consistently. There is a lot of things that are connected to, uh, to diligence, uh, courage, uh, continuity, uh, commitment, faithfulness, uh, just in, in enjoyment, joyfulness, a life of peace. All of that is connected to living a diligent life like Christ or in Christ. And so I want to start this first uh, this with this first scripture. It's Deuteronomy chapter 28, and we're going to look at verses 1 and 2. And now, you can read that on your own because it's, it's a, a little fuller. He's referring to the commandments, those things that are important to God. He wants us to do two things. The scripture says, Now it shall be if you diligently uh, listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all of his commandments. Now, uh, we're going to back up a little bit. The two operative words here uh, that, that follow diligence or diligently is, I have to listen to and I must obey. Uh, two things that are very difficult uh, for man, especially because sometimes uh, we don't listen the way we should listen, because life is noisy, I am noisy, uh, around me is noisy, all these things that we introduce into our life don't exactly assist us in listening to God. And so he's not saying listen to anything, listen to man, listen to anybody around you. He's saying listen to, and he's referring to him. If we diligently listen to now we'll we're going to take a look a little bit later on the word diligently, but I think you can you probably have an assumption as to where it's going. Um, could be a little different than you think it is. Uh, he wants us to listen and he wants us to obey. So obviously, two very separate things. I thought if I listen, then I would obey. No, sometimes what we do is when we listen to uh, to God, that we argue with God or we try to convince ourselves that God really doesn't want me to understand it this way, that it's okay because he doesn't he, he doesn't have a problem with it or he uh, he's looking in my heart, my heart's okay, so then I don't obey. And so he wants me to be obedient. And when I am obedient uh, after listening, those are the two very critical elements in our relationship that are helping us in this diligent walk. It is a gentle walk. It is it is a very careful walk, but it's also a walk of great accuracy. Uh, it, when there is something that finite or so, that that close, that tiny that's going to require us to be diligent, it's like a, a, assembling a model. And you've got all these tiny little parts and sometimes the parts, you have to put glue on certain parts that are so tiny, even your fingertips can't hold it. So you use tweezers, and you take a, a needle, and then you put some of the model glue on it, and you diligently and very carefully, over and over, you put that glue on there because the end result... Well, I would like to welcome you. My name is Pastor Rick, and I'm the senior pastor of At The Well. We are an international and prophetic ministry. Uh, thank you for joining us. For the next 30 minutes, we're going to share the Word of God to you, and we're going to encourage you by what God has to speak to you through His Word via the Holy Spirit. Today, we have a message of encouragement. You may have been going through a few things. You may have encountered a few uh, uh, moments of discouragement. Those, you know what those are like, to, those things that try to separate us from uh, the, the, the vision and the goal of the cross in our lives. So I want you to be encouraged for the next 30 minutes. I want to remind you something, that the Word of God speaks to you every single moment. You are a survivor. 
So what does God, what is his word, what is his plan have to say to you about you surviving everything and anything that you may be enduring? Whether it's in a fire, whether it is through life's adversities or those obstacles or hindrances, you will survive every single one of them because God has commanded your survivorship. So I want you to hold on to that word, survivorship. We're going to take a look at what the Greek and, and what the uh, Hebraic understanding of that word is. So let's get, let's get ready. Let's jump right on in right now. You are a survivor always. And first scripture I want to take you to is Isaiah chapter 66, verses 18 and 19. And the word of God says this to you, For I know their works and their thoughts. The time is coming to gather all nations and languages, and they will come and see my glory. I will set up a miraculous sign among them, and from them I will send survivors to the nations. Tarshish, Put, Lud, Meshech, Tubal, and Javan to the distant islands, and coastlands that have not heard of my name, nor seen my glory, and they will declare and proclaim my glory among the nations. So, right off the bat, survivors do not stay put. Survivors are in constant movement mode. Survivors have a very heavy weight upon their shoulders that God has placed there, but it is an awesome load to bear because... It is doing something that man cannot do alone, but that God does with you. So in other words, God sends you, and he doesn't send you empty-handed. He sends you so full of a purpose and a plan that you can see why you were called to survive. You can see why you were pulled from that prison or saved or redeemed. However you want to view this relationship or the understanding of the word survivor. Now, at the very end of this scripture, I think it's very important that we know that they will declare and proclaim the glory among the nations. If you are a survivor, and I believe I am talking to some specific survivors today, you have survived something. And it's not just because. You didn't survive by your work. You didn't sur survive by your hand. You did not survive by your own planning. This surviving uh, a mode that you are in, your survivorship, was done on purpose so that you would be sent to a place to do two things, to declare and to proclaim the glory of God among the nations. Now, when, when it's not among the nations that already know him. You're going to nations, and as we, as we read, he will send survivors to the nations who have not known him who have never heard of his name. He wants to put you in front of people. Remember, the, the, the definition of the word nation, nations, can translate into one person or into la a land of many. So wherever God sends you, it is because your, your movement demands freedom. It demands a hindrance-free path. God will make sure of that because you have survived something. He has now equipped you to declare and proclaim his name, his glory, his kingdom among a people that do not know him. So let's just take a look at the Hebraic understanding of the word survivor. And it simply means, and very powerfully, it means remnant. It means those, those that have remained. Many have passed this way. Not all have survived. But he has removed certain from a larger group. Some refuse survivorship. Believe it or not, in this world, we make our choices. You've chosen to survive. I have chosen to survive. No more defeat. Uh, no more sadness. No more grieving. Because you have chosen to survive that season. And that survivorship comes with a price to go declare and proclaim the name of God. So there aren't that many. It started off with, let's just say, a large a section. And now the remnant, the few that have remained. Survivors have a purpose. They are sent to the nations who are far away and unfamiliar. So God is sending you to unfamiliar territories or in front of unfamiliar faces so that you would declare and proclaim the glory of the Lord among a people who do not know him. 
And that is a powerful, powerful responsibility because with that comes salvation. With that comes the seed. With that comes future generations. And so God has entrusted you because you have survived, because that fire has, he caused that fire to extinguish or he loosed you from that prison or from that addiction or from that season of unbearable sadness. God has caused you to survive and you have heard that command. You have, you have uh, uh, held on to that command. I want to go back to the very first a portion of Isaiah 66, 18. He says, For I know their works and their thoughts. The time is coming to gather all nations and languages so that they will come and see my glory. So something is coming. And so God is going to use those that have already been prepared. See, the survivor has been loosed. Uh, if you're not a survivor, let's just say there's people that we know that have not survived, or they might be in that season of their the beginning or their uh, uh, the genesis of them surviving, whatever it happens to be. So, because we're all at different places. So they're not prepared to be sent yet, but you are prepared to be sent because you have come forth. You're prepared to move. So we can't become complacent. Ooh, survivors cannot become complacent. If you have survived a prison, when the door opens up, Peter, you're going to have to walk out. You're not free from that prison. Just because the door is open doesn't mean that you are free. You're going to have to do something. You're going to have to thresh, uh, step over the threshold. You're going to have to co-labor with God. That's a, that, that's a word right there. So if you have uh, endured a season of bondage, or if you feel like you have been yoked to something and God has set you free, you are now a survivor, but you're going to have to take a step. You're going to have to move into a place or move away from a place so that you can truly, so that that freedom that God has given you that's connected to your survivorship so that you can truly see it and others so that others will be drawn to it. I want to take you uh, to a scripture that the Lord gave me, Isaiah chapter 10, uh, verse 20. And the word says this, now in that day, the remnant of Israel, see here we are, we're, we're really talking about the survivors in Israel, those that survived, those that remain of Israel, and those of the house of Jacob who have escaped will never again rely on the one who struck them, but will truly rely on the Lord. In other words, when, when, when you were captive, before you survived, uh, before you became the remnant, uh, you were held captive by a greater body or by a greater event or a greater force. That those walls around you were a prison. You had not survived anything because you were still in that place. You have not been set free, let's just say, from that place. So uh, for your daily uh, encouragement or your food or whatever it is, warmth or protection, you actually relied, we all relied on that on that catalyst, on that thing that was uh, the enemy, so to speak. We were in the world. We relied on the world. We made our natural decisions based on the world. Maybe even uh, our decisions were based on those that were around us at the time. And so, but God is saying here, he is saying, those who have escaped will never again rely on the world's system. Those who have, have truly survived, those who truly are the remnant, are you a remnant? Are, have, are, have you remained? And if your hand goes up and says, yes, Pastor Rick, I am, I am definitely a remnant. I'm definitely part of, I'm one of those that have survived many things. Then you do not rely on man any longer. I don't care what it is. If you have been healed of an illness, then we no longer rely on the doctor. We rely on God. If he has provided for your, uh, for your uh, financial uh, increase, we don't rely on the world. We rely on on God. And it says here, they will truly rely on the Lord. And that simply means that there are variations of reliance. In other words, do I rely 100% or do I rely on a fractional measure? And he wants us to rely completely. See, this belief system that is being raised up right now, right before us, the cross that rose up before us, that causes, that demands, I should say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that. It demands that we rely on him 100%. If I rely on him on a simple measure, then I've not survived. I'm in, a, I'm in this, maybe this transitory period of survivorship. I'm not ready yet to be sent. Can't go make declarations and I can't make proclamations if I don't have it fully within myself. So in this process of survivorship, God is calling you to make a decision. 
He is calling you to either be certain or uncertain. You're either going to have to make the decision or you're going to have to wait on the sideline. Are you truly ready to go in? I'm ready to go in, coach. Send me in there. Send me anywhere. Here I am, Lord. Doesn't have caveats. Doesn't have gradients. It doesn't have a, 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 a this a confirmational period. No, it's in the heart. You've made up your mind. Here I am, Lord. Send me. I'm a remnant. I've survived the fire. I am here. I've survived the disease and the and the plagues and the lack and the hunger spiritually and naturally. God, here I am. Send me. Survivors rely on God, and they do not rely on the world's system. I'm going to take you to Genesis chapter 45 and verse 7. Uh, the word says this to you, God sent me to Egypt ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on the earth and to keep you alive by a great measure. We're talking about Joseph. Joseph had an amazing uh, a call upon his life. He saved millions of people from a certain demise because of the famine. Survivors are sometimes sent ahead for the kingdom plan. So in other words, you might be in a season right now where you're at the tail end of this, oh, let's just say, let's call it the, the fire season. Uh, uh, you, you're in there, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and you, okay? We're just going to all put us all put us all in there. But there's a fourth person in there. That fourth person, Jesus, the Son of God, is going to going to make sure that, 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 that everything that you get to that place where you need to go, he made the way. Uh, so we're going to follow in that in that direction, but sometimes you've been, you've survived, and God's, God's going to send you ahead of the plan uh, as a trumpet to blow this, to, to, to make a sound, uh, to shake people up, uh, to get them excited, uh, to, to, uh, to, to bring sound, uh, down some, some heavenly fire, uh, to get people in that place and in that mode prepared spiritually for a greater work. Uh, although what you're doing is a great work, but then there's even a greater work that is going to follow you. Survivors, they're courageous. So Joseph was courageous. He didn't know what he was headed into, he, he, but, but he was courageous. It, it, like David, even David in the face of Goliath was courageous. Uh, he didn't like what he heard. He, he didn't like the way uh, 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 Goliath was, was tearing down uh, and disrespecting God by the things that the arrogance and his self-righteousness. And he's, and you could, you could, almost understand it in the text, in scripture, and he was courageous. That didn't make him any larger in the face of Goliath, but he knew his God was big, so he was courageous and boasting in that in that courage, and that's what we do. I, I don't want to be fearful anymore. I know you don't want to be fearful. Survivors are no longer fearful. They've already gone through that thing. They've already met that fear face to face, and I know that I'm talking to you right now. You have had enough of that fear. No more vulnerability in the face of fear. God's taking you to a brand new place, brand new platform. Sure, that problem looked like it was bigger than you, but at the end of it, now in retrospect, you're saying, wow, what a minuscule problem and what a massive God I have. What a massive and amazing, powerful God, ever present, ever, ever present, never leaving, never forsaking me in anything. Even when I felt the loneliest, I remember his words and he says to us, I will never leave you. I am in the thick of it, paraphrasing. I'm in the midst of it with you. So you're not going through this alone because I am going to cause you to survive. If you work with God, God will cause you to survive because it is critical that you do not become defeated, that you are not defeated because there's a greater work inside of you at this time that must come into manifestation. Again, courage cannot be separated from survivorship. Uh, in John chapter 16, verse 33, and the word says this to you, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have perfect peace. In the world, you may have tribulation, distress, and suffering. But be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world, my conquest accomplished, my victory abiding. So he has told you these things. He has given you courage. He has told you about what has already been uh, conquered on your behalf many times. A lot of us, a lot of people, a lot of believers, they get very 
uh, it's very daunting to look at the problem. They get defeated even before a solution is presented. They're, they're already looking for a way out. They're already planning for their own demise. Uh, what will happen if I don't do X? Then if I don't do this, then this will fall apart. And, and so we're, what, 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 that ha- what, what that brings forth is a destruction of our faith. And God right now, survivors, is reminding us, survivors don't waver in their faith. They are at a place in their relationship uh, with God that they no longer retreat, but they advance in increments. And so he's encouraging us here. Survivors are well aware of tribulation, distress, and suffering. Uh, You are well aware of what you have gone through. You are well aware of what a tribulation is. You are well aware of that distress and the suffering that you have gone through, whether it's in the flesh or spiritually. But at the end of all this, survivors are confident, they are undaunted, and there is joy. Survivors are overcomers. And in order for us, what does the word say? Uh, When you were uh, in the process of survivorship, Something was being constructed to add to something greater so that you could become an overcomer. When you were surviving something, a testimony was being authored. Something was being written. Something was being prepared, not only in you, but before you. You were walking into something that later on, when completed, once you survived, could be added to something in Revelation, and that is the blood of the Lamb. So when your testimony, that declaration, oop, there it is, that declaration and that proclamation of the glory of God in your life, of the glory of God before the nations, before the people, my question to you is, what has God done for you? If you're going to say nothing, I need to talk to somebody who's got something there. I know you've got something. You have, God has done something for you. You have overcome something. You have survived something. And there's no such thing as a tiny thing in the kingdom of God. If God was in it, this is a massive thing, however your perspective or perception is of it. Somebody needs to hear it because when you add that to what Jesus did for you at Calvary, boom, together, that makes you an overcomer. It's the power of your of the of the of the word of what God has done in your life, coupled with the blood of the Lamb, that perfect sacrifice, Jesus the Christ, added together with you makes an you an overcomer. Now that means you are in survivor mode. There is no backing down. There is no defeat. You can't go anywhere but moving forward because that, my brother and my sister, that right there is what your faith is all about. Your faith is not simply there to sustain you. It's not sim- that's it's greater, it's bigger, it's continual, it's it's a non-stopping. It doesn't it doesn't have time to stop. Your faith continually moves forward. There are things in the world that'll try to to try to inter- introduce setbacks. They'll try to uh, d- distract you, try to get you to look at some other side. Maybe it's a problem. Maybe it's uh, uh, some words from a, a, a against you. Uh, maybe you heard a rumor or you heard some murmuring or backbiting. Why do we think God doesn't doesn't like murmuring and backbiting? Because those are the things that, that, that people speak, the believers that speak behind believers' backs. Because those things are, are there to poison the body of Christ. But the body of Christ is surviving. You're one of them. You're in survival mode. God wants you to understand that what you have gone through is is priceless. You can't reverse it. Walk through it. You can't try. Don't plan your way out of it. God's already got that way out of it. If you try to figure out a new plan, you might go back into that need to survive. You might go back into that prison that God let you out. You've got to co-labor with him. I have a scripture I'd like to share with you, and that's uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, and the word says this to you, uh, we are pressured in every, every way. So there isn't, there isn't anything that, that can contain you or pressure you or hinder you that God is not aware of. He, he, he is well aware of all of the fancies and all of the wiles of the enemy, but he's calling upon you to be equally aware you have to be equally aware. Watchman, you cannot sleep. Gatekeeper, you cannot sleep. We need full armor all the time. We don't. We, we cannot survive. The body cannot survive on a devotion a day that is insufficient, and we cannot survive on good works because the gospel is not good works. The gospel is the gospel of faith. 
So I need faith. Faith arises from those moments when you are being called to survive something, trusting in something that someone you cannot see, a God that is invisible to us. We don't need to touch his hands. We don't need to touch his side. We don't need to put our fingers upon his feet to see where those uh, nails struck. We don't need that because we know he endured that cross on Calvary for you. He wants you to survive. Whatever it is, there isn't anything too big or too small that you will not survive from. God is causing you, calling you to stand up in that survival mode. He's saying, I know everything that's pressuring you. I know that all these things that are trying to hedge you in, but you will not be crushed. You, you, you will not be, any longer will you be unsure or finding a way out. You are not perplexed any longer. People who are perplexed, according to the scripture, people who are perplexed, they don't see that they've survived. They're still in the fire. People who are hedged in, pressed in, pressed down, and, and they don't look to the cross, they are in that prison and they're going to stay in that prison. It will repeat itself over and over and over again until we understand something. He says, but you have not been deserted, you have, you, you have not been left to stand alone, and you have not been struck down, and you will never be destroyed. God wants you to know that you are a survivor. You are not going to be destroyed. You are not going to be torn down. There isn't anything bigger than him that is before him that will cause you any harm or destruction. Survivors have encountered a way out. Jesus is your way out. Jesus is the way out. They do not see where they are or where they were, I should say, but where they are going. Survivors don't look backwards. Survivors look forward. They don't, they don't continually remind themselves of where I've come from. They just know that where they came from was God ordained, God saved me, God moved me, God released me, God redeemed me. He opened the prison doors and now I am free. Thank God I am free. And now it's time to move forward. The free just don't sit outside the prison gates. I serve in the prison ministry. And I'll tell you right now, when an inmate is loose, when he is finally let go and he has been released from jail, they don't just camp outside the jail and, and, and have a picnic. They try to get as far away as possible from that place. You can't change the past, but that past is going to be used to glorify God. Remember that he wants to be declared to the nations, that he wants to be proclaimed to the nations, that his glory is amazingly awesome and insurmountable. Nothing can squash it because he's got a group of people that have survived, the remnants, those that have remained, and they can only proclaim and declare the goodness of the Lord. Now, survivors do not know destruction. Well, Pastor Rick, I've been through a lot of things. They seem to sure have destroyed me. They almost destroyed me. No, survivors do not know destruction. They change. Survivors know change. If you have survived the season, then you have changed. Now you can look back. If that season starts to come back at you, you're going to say, oh, I know God caused me to survive this before. He is with me right now. I remember what it took. I remember I am not going to be caught off guard. You are a survivor because you trust in God. You are a survivor because the plan of God in your life is going to be manifested. There are people in your lives that are waiting, that God has caused to cross and intersect wherever you are. If you are destroyed, then what you have to declare and what you have to proclaim, as Isaiah 66, 18 and 19 says, you must declare and proclaim the glory among the nations. So if we are destroyed, then I can't proclaim and declare that the truth. But God is cause, calling right now for the nation of survivors. You're a survivor. Stand around the survivors. Hang around the survivors. Gather the, around the survivors. Gather them together. Proclaim and declare the goodness of the Lord among the nations so that the name of Jesus will be the only thing they hear. We live in a time when that name is being suppressed and compressed so that with the hopes the world wants this evil that is in the world, we know it, it's there, the Bible talks about it, and it wants that name to be removed and erased. But I got news for you, survivors don't know how to be quiet. Survivors don't know how to be silent. 
survivors keep moving and they might be stealth. They might, they're led by the spirit of God. And so they don't blurt. They don't, they don't move on their own accord or on their own plans. They are guided like a missile system, stealth missile system, led by the Holy Spirit, aimed in a direction into a life to speak a word of life, to bring eternal life into someone. And that's you. You've survived because a way was made out for you. And God wants you to know today that he is there waiting for you, wherever you are in this survival, uh, survivorship mode, wherever you are. If you are out, get moving, don't stop, keep pressing forward, stay in the word of God. If you are getting close to that and you can see it, you know, when when the gates are almost open, you, you're, you're stepping into this new season of surviving. One day will come, an hour will pass, and you'll say, I survived the fire. I, I, I found a way out. I was led out. The Holy Spirit said, follow me. Follow my voice. I will lead you out of this fire. This season is over. You have survived. This is your time to flourish. And this is definitely your time to excel. God bless you.